Now, a new report claims that Chinese scientists are mounting what they say is the world's first effective attack on a widely used encryption method using a quantum computer. According to a report published by the South China Morning Post, this breakthrough poses a real and substantial threat to the long-standing password protection mechanism employed across critical sectors, including banking and the military. As per the report, Chinese scientists are exploring various attack approaches on specialized quantum computers in the latest work led by Wang Chao, a Shanghai Chinese University kind of professor. The research team said it used a quantum computer produced by Canada's D-Wave systems to successfully breach cryptographic algorithms. They successfully attacked the present GIFT-64 and Rectangle algorithms, all representative of the SPN, or Substitution Permutation Network Structure, which forms part of the foundation for advanced encryption standard widely used in the military and finance. In military, these algorithms are used to secure satellite communication, radio communication, network and email security, voice over internet protocol, and secure voice communication. While in the finance, these algorithms are used to secure mobile payment systems, online banking protocols, credit card transactions, digital wallets, and blockchain technology. Now, according to the peer-reviewed paper, this is the first time that a real quantum computer has posed a real and substantial threat to multiple full-scale SPN-structured algorithms in use today. The findings were published on September 30th in the Chinese Journal of Computers, a Chinese language academic journal run by the China Computer Federation. D-Wave Systems, the world's first quantum computing company, originally designed the D-Wave Advantage quantum computer to solve some practical problems. The machine has been used by Lockheed Martin to test fighter jet control software and by Google for image recognition tasks having no direct connection to cryptographic decryption. That is, cryptographic encryption. The D-Wave Advantage quantum computer employs an algorithm named quantum annealing, which simulates the metallurgical process of heating and then cooling to toughen metal. It enables the rapid resolution of mathematical challenges. Wang Chao described it in his paper as akin to an artificial intelligence algorithm with the ability to globally optimize solutions. His team combined this algorithm with traditional mathematical methods to devise a new computational architecture. He also noted the current limitations of quantum computing. He said it had much potential but was hindered by environmental interference underdeveloped hardware and the inability of a single attack algorithm to target multiple cryptographic systems. He noted that as the field of quantum computing evolves, further breakthroughs are anticipated. He stated that through this exploration, it is expected to establish a computing architecture that combines artificial intelligence algorithms with quantum effects and mathematical methods in the future. Collins Chong Yo Kiet is a China analyst as well as foreign affairs and security strategist. He's now joining us live from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Mr. Yo Kiet, thank you very much for making time for us and welcome. First of all, what do you make of these claims that China is mulling using quantum computing encryption to target banks and military installations world over? How damning is, is this discovery according to you? Well, it's not. It's nothing new actually, because we have seen how, uh, you know, this information warfare, cyber warfare, have been used for years now by state actors, uh, of course, including China, for different purposes: espionage, you know, propaganda, manipulation, economic warfare. So, and 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 countries have you know robust systems in place to prevent these uh, intrusions into their systems. And uh, this latest, you know, update, you know, of course, raises. Uh, different, you know, risks as well as you know, wariness on the part of different countries. But uh, I don't see that, you know, having this profound impact 
on uh, especially on key military and sensitive uh, military installations and uh, systems in place, especially in Western countries. Uh, they have embraced, they have, you know, uh, been, been facing this, this kind of attacks for years now. And uh, we have also seen how the U.S. has a robust system in place. Just last year, he has his own national cyber security strategy, you know, espoused by the White House itself. Also, we have seen how just, in fact, uh, two months ago in August, the uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology under the, the Department of Commerce have also raised this risk of, you know, the, the, the potential intrusion using quantum technology to, 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 you know, to get sensitive information and all that. So, uh, but also they have also this, uh, you know, fallback options, effective deterrence policies. They have come up with different, you know, Falcon program uh, developed by IBM. They have chosen different uh, cryptographies in place also, ML, KEM, ML, DSA, SL, HDSA and all that. So I don't see that as highly threatening in nature. And uh, there's for sure that uh, the Western country, especially, you know, among the five ICE intelligence and other Western countries, especially the U.S., have developed robust deterrence and fallback option to to anticipate this kind of you know quantum breakthrough either by China or maybe to a certain extent Pyongyang or Russia. So um, this is still in early stages, and uh, it, it research you know is it, aligned with the the earlier concerns being raised by top officials from the U.S. and they have, uh, I believe, robust systems in place to prevent this from uh, having a direct threat to key military uh, domains of the U.S. in particular. I think uh, one of the biggest problems why this is concerning is the mention of the finance sector and also the military installations. But uh, Wang Chao described it in his paper as akin to artificial intelligence algorithm with the ability to globally optimize solutions. Can you briefly explain in layman's language what that means? Well, we have, you know, existing threats, you know, itself from, you know, existing groups that are being linked to China. Of course, we have seen how the APT, the Advanced Persistent Threat, uh, different state, you know, sponsored groups that have targeted, uh, you know, different countries, you know, including, of course, mostly Western countries, Australia, Canada, Germany, of course, India as well, and of course, New Zealand and, and the US. So um, this, this lead towards quantum capacity and the uh, targeting of key financial domains that might have a profound impact on uh, you know, global financial security, digital systems are not new actually, but uh, you know, the, the fact that it uses now the new uh, you know, critical sector of you know, AI-based and quantum-based capacities that might change the entire equation of uh, digital security as well as cyber security. But uh, this has been in place actually for, for years before this anticipated uh, capacity comes into the picture. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, we have seen previous, uh, you know, cases, uh, you know, incidents where, you know, these, these incidents have happened uh, either by state sponsored groups or by independent groups. And uh, we have also seen the, the, the negative fallout back from that. But uh, for, for this to actually happen and to be actually sanctioned by the Chinese government, uh, you know, knowing that, you know, other countries will have this, uh, you know, eventual evidence that will be linked to the Chinese government uh, will be of, you know, little minimal impact or interest for China itself to, to eventually, you know, uh, consider this option. So to me, uh, it's still very much in early stages. I don't see that as a, a very concerning uh, game changer in terms of uh, the overall domain and uh, the sphere of digital security. The US and the other combined Western capacity, especially the five eyes intelligence combined expertise in this aspect will ensure that uh, it will always consistently stay ahead of whatever breakthroughs that uh, the Chinese might have or the Russians might have in this aspect. And we have yet to see as of now any major cyber ops that have, you know, successfully crippled the key sensitive military, you know, or you know, okay. potential uh, efforts by the U.S. so far. Mr. Yo Kiet. I want you to make this brief and short. We are living in a world where artificial intelligence is fast evolving, and now there is the field of quantum computing. What are the immediate breakthroughs or advantages of these two systems that the world should anticipate briefly? Yes, uh, we are, of course, indeed living in a new age now, of course, being uh, led by AI and uh, quantum capacities in which, uh, you know, some of the Potential implications are beyond imagination that would change 
match, you know, the entire conventional approaches that we have you know, used to be living under for the past uh, many decades. And uh, that's why we have seen this, uh, you know, scramble towards uh, dominance, superiority in these two aspects by, you know, of course, China and the US and other allies. Uh, it's of great importance for us to, to join hands to ensure that it's not being used negatively, it's not being used to the benefit of uh, certain uh, state actors uh, for their own geopolitical, you know, interests. And it has to be used responsibly and uh, for, for also to, to protect key in infrastructures, especially in the finance domain, as well as key, uh, you know, political and international security uh, calculations, especially in, in areas of great, you know, tensions in South China Sea, in Indo-Pacific, and uh, this might be used wrongly to the advantage of certain actors. And uh, it's of great importance for, for, for different countries. They are aligned with this rules-based order and values-based approach to 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 come together to synergize and to pool their efforts and resources i have to stop to, you to i'm sorry their expertise i'm yeah, sorry to, our... to, to thwart this future risk i am yes, sorry right. i am sorry our time is up thank you very much mr collins thank John you very much your kiet for talking to us today for all the latest news download the we on app and subscribe to our youtube channel